Hey everyone. So uh, I'm Jesse, and I do ops at GitHub or DevOps or whatever the kids are calling it these days. So today I'm going to be talking about chat ops at GitHub. So what is chat ops? Chat ops is what we've been calling the pattern of automating common operational tasks with Hubot. So before I go any further, I just want to get a show of hands. How many of you use some type of group chat, like IRC or Campfire, in your daily development? Cool. How many of you deploy from that environment? OK. How many of you deploy from the command line? All right, cool. So Hubot. Hubot began as a simple Campfire bot. Um, but it's evolved into a, a lot more. A lot of people have a perception of Hubot as something that just shows funny pictures and cat pictures for us. Uh, it does a lot of that, I promise. But it's not just that. Hubot's really the primary control service for our infrastructure. So explaining the principles of chat ops you know, from the outside in is, is really kind of hard. So I'm just going to start off with an example. Um, let's say that we've made some updates to our internal Git package. And we think it's ready to go, but we want to roll it out in a controlled fashion and establish confidence in it, right? So we use Puppet for configuration management. Apologies to all the chef folks in the house. But um, we use Hubot to interact with Puppet. So here's how we manage these changes in a chat ops style. So we have a GitHub repo for our Puppet repository. This is all the boring stuff. You guys, you all know how this works. We check out a branch. We make the change to the version number of the package. We uh, make a commit, and then we push that up to GitHub and create a pull request. So once you're, uh, you know, once you're writing the pull request, in the middle of writing the pull request in Campfire, we have a CI bot that pipes in the output of the build. Every branch that's pushed up to GitHub is, automatic, is automatically sent through CI. So that's generally pretty helpful. So now that you know that branch is green, you use Hubot to deploy that branch to production. That just means, in this case, that we're updating the Puppet Master so it has an environment set up that's called the same thing, git gh13. When you do that, Hubot gives you the deploy output and tells you we've restarted the Puppet Master. So Puppet has a no-op mode that we'd like to use to uh, establish confidence when we're rolling out changes to make sure they don't have any unintended side effects. Um, it simulates what would happen if you ran Puppet with this branch. So we run that with Hubot too. And Hubot returns the output. You can see here that the version number of Git would have changed. So now that the uh, no-op has given us some confidence that this is going to do what we want, uh, we're going to roll out the new Git version to one file server, maybe, to keep, you know, keep the possible impact of regression small. So we'll roll it out to file server 1. And when we do that, again, Hubot shows us the output, lets us know that the package actually changed. Looks good. So now this new package is out, and we want to check on some stuff and see that it's actually working, right? Um, we've added support to Hubot for showing us graphs from uh, CollectD and, and Graphite. So we ask Hubot for that graph. And we take a look at this. It looks, you know, it looks relatively normal. This is within normal bounds. So feeling pretty good about it. Maybe we check a couple other more places. And uh, if we're confident that this version looks good, let's, we're going to roll it out everywhere. So from there, we merge the pull request. Hubot lets us know that, know that that happened, too. Uh, CI fires again to make sure master is green. Hubot tells you to do that. And once CI passes, the master branch is automatically deployed to production. Of course, Hubot let lets you know that, that you were the one that merged the pull request, so you're actually doing that, even though he's doing it for you. And when it's done, you get the same notification. So now that the new version of Git is on master, we can force the ship of it everywhere. A puppet runs on an interval, you know, kind of like Chef or whatever. Um, but sometimes when we're doing a controlled rollout like this, we want, to, we want to force it out and make sure that it's happening all at once. So we roll it out everywhere. And here, again, Hubot tells us that the package version has changed on all the different file servers. So again, to check the impact of the deploy, we check the load on all file servers. Looks good. That red one's a little weird, but it's probably unrelated. <laughs> It'll be fine. 
So take a quick peek at the logs and make sure we didn't break anything else. Just to, you know, just to check. And we're still seeing hooks fire for uh, post receive and upload packs, so everything looks good. So, so that's chat ops. It's really simple. It's doing all the things that you do on a daily basis in Campfire, all right? Simply put, Hubot is the star of our ops team. Hubot does a lot of things for us. We use Hubot day in and day out to interact with other simple tools we've written over JSON APIs and, and over little, bridge, little bridges. We have Heaven, which is our deploy infrastructure, Janky, which is our CI server, GraphMe, which is the automation that we've written around Graphite to show us these graphs, and Shell, which is a repository of, of bash scripts. I know everyone has something like that sitting around. So Hubot interacts with all these uh, internal tools for us, but it interacts with external APIs just as simply. If you have a, a JSON API, making your service work with Hubot is pretty simple. The log example I showed was uh, using PaperTrail, which is a software as a service logging, logging tool, and we just make a REST call out to it and search through, search through logs. So, but why do we obsess about Hubot? This is just a chatbot. It's, it's all about cat pictures. So there are some distinct upsides to this approach that we've noticed as our use of Hubot in ops has grown. So this, this whole flow that I just showed to you, the, the rolling out of a new version of Git across all of our infrastructure, what's really neat about this and why Hubot is so cool and why ChatOps is so neat is that everyone sees that happen. You don't have to tell someone to do something. Sorry, you don't have to do something and then tell someone you've done it. You just do it and then everyone sees right in the flow of conversation. That's really powerful. And not only does everyone just see that happen, everyone sees that happen on their first day, right? There's no, you don't have to show someone how to deploy. They see it immediately. It's, they're passively aware of how to do all of these things in Hubot. And we don't just do this with Puppet, right? We do this with tons of other things in our infrastructure. I have a few examples here. We can use Hubot to check the status of, a, of any branch that's built. We can deploy a branch of any GitHub app to any specific server if we want to test a branch in one place. We can get graphs of the app's recent performance. We can check the status of Unicorn across all front ends. We can check the status of a rescue queue. We can check load on all the front ends with the graph. We can uh, check con current connections to a front end that we think might have a problem since we deployed a branch to it. We can get lo logs for our Smoke RPC service on that front end and, and figure out that we actually did break it. And then we can take it out of the load balancer. We can update the status site. And these are all things that happen in the flow of every day, right? We can determine who's on call, so we can apologize to them for taking the site down. We can check Pingdom to see if we have broken everything or just something small. And because we're kind of freaking out because we broke something, we can chill ourselves out a little bit. Once we realize that the branch that we just deployed was what was bad, we can revert back to master on the broken front end. And then check the logs again to verify things have returned to normal. And then get yourself pumped up because you fixed it, right? And then once that's done and you've confirmed it, you can bring the fixed front end back into rotation and update the status site. And once the outage has been resolved, you know, maybe when you were looking through the logs, you saw a weird IP. And you can look that up and see that it's from China and realize that maybe it's a spammer. And then someone might cue up the song that popped in their head when they thought about drums and gorillas at the same time. And then you can finish it all off with a tweet about our drink up tonight. So all of these things that happen in the flow of of campfire for us, that's what, it, that's what chat ops is. <coughs> chat ops means building tools that make it easier to operate your infrastructure with Hubot rather than maybe Terminal or Chrome or Safari. And this is the key of the whole talk. By placing tools directly in the middle of the conversation, everyone is pairing all of the time, even if you're remote. I'm gonna say that again. By placing tools directly in the middle of the conversation, Everyone is pairing all of the time. That essentially leads to accidentally teaching by doing, right? 
Ryan Tomeko was the creator of Hubot, and he had this in mind from the very first commits to Hubot. It initially was just a simple wrapper around a repository of shell scripts that we use for you know, managing and monitoring our infrastructure. But it's turned into so much more. It's turned into one of the main ways that we do training. It's just by doing. For example, this is how I often respond to how do you do X in Campfire. I just do it. And someone sees how it works. Placing tools in the middle of the conversation means that you get communication of your work for free, right? If you're doing something in a shell or on a website or on a dashboard, you have to do it then tell people about it, right? If you do it with Hubot in a chat room that your company uses, that comes for free. When you're interneting, right? You're just sitting there typing in campfire, moving along. You don't have to ask things about what the status is, right? You don't have to ask, what are, what are you doing? Here are a few things, for example, that I haven't asked recently because Hubot has told me the answer to by seeing people actually do the work. How's that deploy going? Are you deploying that or should I? Is anyone responding to that Nagios alert? Is that branch green? How does load look? Did anyone update the status page? And did that deploy finish? Right? These are questions that if you're in a, a physical environment, you might ask cube to cube, day in and day out. But GitHub doesn't have cubes. At any, any given day, and on this day, 56% of people were, were not in the office. I think that on a day, daily basis, that's gone up. Last time I looked, it was like you know, 70 or 80% at that, at that point in time weren't in the office. So we can't just lean over and say, are you deploying? Are you going to respond to that Nagios alert? And that allows us to work from wherever. Our ops team is entirely remote. We actually only have one member of our ops team in San Francisco. The rest of the team is distributed. And if you can communicate freely from wherever, that means you can work from wherever, which means that you can hire talent from wherever. You don't have to be restricted to the people in Atlanta or the people in Salt Lake, right? You can hire the best of the best of the best wherever they might live. And chat ops is really extremely useful during outage situations or anything, any other situation that requires tactical response. People often, I've seen this a lot, people get into the mode of, you know, interneting, right? In typing in their terminal, hold on, I'm going to fix it. And they're silent for three or four minutes. They're fixing it, whatever it is. And you have no idea what they're doing. But if they're responding to an outage, you know, responding to an incident using commands with Hubot, that communication comes for free, and you don't have to wait for them to emerge from terminal and tell you what's actually going on. Another benefit of chat ops is it lets you hide ugly interfaces and decide exactly the interaction you want with porcelain. You can build nice interactions around bad tools. My favorite example is that thing. Right. So when a new alert comes in, Hubot lets us know about it, politely delivers it to us without any unnecessary eye bleeding. And we can interact with this directly in Campfire. Making this easy means that other developers, developers and other ops engineers actually do this, right? I, I wonder how often developers actually mute services if they're going to perform maintenance on them. I don't know, I, it never happened, ever happened at GitHub before we did this. Asking someone to use the Nagios web interface is not something that I would ask any of my friends, right? <laughs> so why not give them something like this instead and then they'll actually do it. Another one of these services that I love to hate on is PagerDuty, right? So we've built some Hubot integration that I actually just open sourced um, a couple days ago at Monotorama um, that automates some interaction with PagerDuty. You can ask Pager what's going on, and let Qbot lets you know it's okay. But the biggest benefit that we've actually seen from this is I, I added a, a command to our PagerDuty Qbot integration that allows you to steal the Pager from someone for a certain amount of time. If I was to type PagerMe60 
in Campfire right now, I would take the pager. The pager would be assigned to me for the next 60 minutes. And in the world of ops, there are some things that we can't necessarily avoid, especially in, you know, week-long on-call schedules. There's showering, which is important, and maybe eating a burrito, and maybe driving to or from the office, right? If you don't have an ability to easily help your team, right? In the existing PagerDuty the AP, or the website, to set up an exception requires lots of like time zone math and manual clicking and setting of dates, and that's complex, right? If I want to get in the shower, I would feel bad asking someone to just do this thing that's going to take a minute to help out, right? But if it takes that long, this has really inspired a culture of sharing on the pager at GitHub, which is Completely unintended. I just added this as a convenience method. But now people pager me 10, pager me 30. I, I'll be on call and say, I'm going to go to a cafe. And I don't ask, and people say, pager me 30. And it's pretty amazing how that's helped us. And one last benefit of chat ops that we've seen is that you get mobile support for free, right? If you have if you use the Campfire app, you can do things like this is a Campfire app that we're hacking on, you can grab the status of a Nagios alert or a Nagios service or any of those things from your phone, which means that you can do anything Hubot can do from your phone or your bed or a beach in Hawaii or a Jeep, right? You can fix a lot of things that are simple and have clearly defined resolutions without pulling your laptop out of your bag. And that makes it easier to be on call which I know that we all want. And that's chat ops at its finest, right? Making it easier to be on call, making it easier to interact with your infrastructure. So who better to summarize this, all of this, than Hubot himself? I asked Hubot what he thought about chat ops, and he said, chat ops, all the things. <laughs> so listen to what Hubot said. You'll love it. Your ops team will love it. You'll help other developers learn how to interact with their infrastructure without writing lengthy documentation because they'll see it. If you get this PagerDuty integration in, you'll, you can help inspire a culture of sharing the pager, which has been really amazing at, at GitHub. And the, the benefits that we see from this, we, we, we iterate on this all of the time. And it's amazing to see how, it's, how it grows and evolves. So to get started, check out hubot.github.com. You can use, uh, from there, there's instructions on how to create your own Hubot if you don't have one. And um, yeah, that's all I have. If you, if you can't chat ops all your things at your gig now, you can always come work with me at GitHub. <laughs> so uh, thanks.